Hi everyone and welcome back to the series. In this video, we will talk about NLU training pipelines and dialog management policies. Training pipelines and dialog management policies are the core of your assistant. They define how your assistant will understand user inputs and how your assistant will decide on how to respond back to the user. This is where you can actually choose what kind of methods your assistant will use when making decisions. For example, rule-based techniques or machine learning models. First, let's talk about the basics, the setup. NLU training pipeline and dialogue management policies will have to be defined inside of your config.yaml file. If you start developing your assistant using Krasa init function, config.yaml file will be created for you automatically with an example pipeline that you can use. Config.yaml file consists of three main parts. Language. This parameter defines in which spoken language you will be developing your assistant. Pipeline. This part of the configuration is very important and it will be used to define the NLU training pipeline. Your assistant will use NLU training pipeline to define the steps that will be used to detect the intents and entities. And the third one, policies another very important part of the config.yaml file. Policies define the dialog management techniques and models that your assistant will use to decide on how to respond to users' inputs. I would like to spend a little bit more time in this video speaking about the NLU training pipeline and dialog management policies. NLU training pipeline defines the steps that each user message will be passed through until your assistant is able to make a decision on what user message is about and which important details should be extracted from user input. By defining an LU training pipeline, you can define all of the processing steps from raw message tokenization all the way to which classifier will be used to predict which intent label should be assigned to the user's message. As I have mentioned previously, if you start developing your assistant using Krasa init function, config.yaml file with an example pipeline will be created for you. Then you can make changes to that pipeline and use it to further develop your assistant. But you can also build the pipeline completely from scratch by yourself. And to do that, you can define specific components inside of your config.yaml file. A very important point to mention about pipeline components is that the order of your components inside of the config.yaml file matters. This means that the first component in your config.yaml file will be trained and used first and so on. Also, some components might be using the results of the previous components. So every time you are defining a pipeline yourself, you should always be mindful about what kind of order you provide for your pipeline components. Rasa open source comes with a number of different components that you can use to build your own custom pipelines. Which components you use will highly depend on what kind of problem you are trying to tackle and what kind of information you would like your assistant to be able to extract from user inputs. We will do a high level overview of the components, but to learn all the details and all the configurations that you can use for specific components, make sure to check out Rasa documentation. When users send messages to your assistant, they do that in a simple human language. But obviously, for your assistant to be able to understand what the user's message is about, your assistant has to crunch those messages into understandable pieces. The first component that will allow you to get closer to that goal is a tokenizer. Tokenizers are components which are designed to extract tokens, for example, words, from raw user messages. Later on, your assistant can use those tokens to extract features and so on. Rasa comes with a bunch of different tokenizers that you can use. For example, white space tokenizer, which works in a simple manner of looking for a white space between the words to extract the tokens. This tokenizer works really well for languages like English. But if you are looking for different tokenizers, you can try out a little bit more complicated spacey tokenizer or if you are building your assistant in, for example, Chinese, you can check out Jebba Tokenizer, which is built specifically for this language. 
After the tokens are created, your assistant will have to extract features from those tokens to be able to then feed them into the intent classification models to decide what user message is about. The component that allows you to do that is called featureizers. Featureizers are designed to extract features from extracted tokens in a form of sparse and dense feature vectors. Rasa comes with a set of different featureizers for you to choose from. There are some simpler ones like regex featureizer, which extracts features based on specific regex pattern, but you can also use more advanced featureizers like language model featureizer. Next, you can define intent classifiers for intent classification. Intent classifiers uses the features extracted by featureizer components. There is a bunch of different classifiers that you can choose for your assistant. The most powerful intent classification model available in Rasa is called diet classifier. One of the core features of this classifier is that it does both intent classification and entity extraction. Diet classifier usually outperforms other intent classification models available in Rasa open source, and it comes with a bunch of different parameters that you can configure to best suit your use case. You can also define entity extractors that will be used to extract entities from user inputs. Here as well, you have a choice from quite a few components. But for example, if you're using diet classifier for intent classification, this model can handle entity extraction for you as well. A very important point to mention here is that you can definitely use a few different components for entity extraction. For example, you can use Ducklink Entity Extractor to extract entities like numbers, dates, and so on, and then use, for example, Diet Classifier to extract other types of entities. If after looking through all of the available components that come with Rasa open source, you don't find the components that you need for your assistant, you can also create your custom components and add them to your assistant. To learn how to do that, you should check out Rasa documentation or check out other tutorials available on Rasa blog or our YouTube channel. Now, let's talk about the dialogue management policies. At each step of the conversation, your assistant has to make a decision on how to respond back to the user inputs. This is made based on the dialogue management policies that you can define inside of the config.yaml file. Some policies that are available at Rasa are simple rule-based policies that work based on set of specific rules, but you can also choose more advanced machine learning based dialogue management policies. You can define more than one dialogue management policy inside of your config.yaml file, and the policy that makes the prediction for the next action with the highest accuracy makes the decision. Dialogue management policies are different from NLU pipeline in a way that NLU pipeline components are trained and used sequentially, while dialogue management policies can be trained and used in parallel. If two dialogue management policies predict the next best action with the same accuracy, the decision is being made based on the policy priority. Rasa open source comes with a default policy priority that looks as follows. Here, the higher number means the higher policy priority. While policy priority is something that you can technically configure yourself, we highly advise you to use the default values that come with Rasa open source. This is because changes in policy priority can result in some unexpected and undesired assistant behaviors. There are two types of policies in Rasa open source rule-based policies and machine learning-based policies. Rule-based policies use a set of rules to decide on how an assistant should respond next. They use the rules defined inside of the rules.yaml file to make the decisions and predict the next action with a confidence of one. Rule-based policies are great when you want to add some specific strict behaviors to your assistant or enable your assistant to collect some specific information before running specific actions, or just add some business logic to your assistant's behaviors. Machine learning-based policies are quite different from rule-based policies. Machine learning-based policies, they try to learn the patterns from the conversational data that you provide inside of the stories.yaml file. 
Machine learning based policies can help you to make your assistance a little bit more robust. You can enable your assistants to generalize on unseen user inputs and handle a little bit more complicated conversations with different dialogue turns, interruptions, and other conversational components. A simple rule of thumb that we advise you to use is to think about what kind of situations you would like your assistant to be able to handle. If a specific situation can be handled with a simple rule, then you should definitely use rules to model those behaviors. For situations that can be handled with a simple rule, you should definitely include machine learning based dialogue management policies inside of your config.yaml file. This will allow your assistant to handle the conversations that deviate from the stories and rules that you include inside of your stories.yaml file and rules.yaml files respectively. Now let's talk about the rule policies and machine learning based policies available in Rasa. Rule policy is the main rule-based policy that is available in Rasa open source. This is the policy that you can use to add specific strict behaviors to your assistant. This policy learns from the rules that you define inside of the rules.yaml file when deciding on how to respond next to the user. Rule policy is very powerful. For example, you can use rule policy to impose specific behaviors on your assistant. So, for example, you can enable your assistant to always respond with a specific message when a specific intent is predicted. You can also use rule policy to enable your assistant to collect specific details before running a specific action. This process of collecting the information before running specific actions, which we call form filling, will be covered in great detail in the later episodes of the series. If you would like to learn more about specific configurations and available parameters for the rule policy, you should check out the RASA documentation. Another policy that technically works like a rule-based policy is memoization policy. This policy is very simple. It tries to predict the next best action by matching the conversation with the existing stories in your stories.yaml file. This policy predicts the next action with a confidence of one. Now, speaking about machine learning based policies, you have an option to use TED policy. TED stands for Transformer Embedding Dialogue Policy, which is an architecture for next action prediction. TED policy comes with a bunch of different parameters that you can configure, for example, number of epochs, max history, number of layers, and more. To learn more about this policy and better understand all the parameters that you can configure for it, you should check out the video in Algorithm Whiteboard series. TED policy is the main machine learning policy that we recommend you to use to enable your assistant to handle more complicated conversations and generalize on unseen user inputs. As I have mentioned, there are quite a lot of different parameters that you can configure for dialog management policies. You should check out the Rasa documentation to learn more about all of them, but I wanted to highlight one of the most important parameters. It's max history. Max history parameter allows you to define how many steps your assistant keeps in the memory when making the prediction for the next action. If you would like your assistant to handle longer and more complicated conversations, you will very likely have to tune this parameter and probably increase the value of it. But be very mindful of that. The higher the value of max history parameter, the larger and more complicated your dialogue manager model gets which takes longer to train. So to summarize, config.yaml file is extremely important and uh, is really the core of your assistant. This is where you can define how your assistant will understand user messages and how your assistant will make decisions on how to respond to user inputs. You should check out the Rasa documentation to learn the specifics about all the components and dialogue management policies we covered in this video. Happy building, and I hope that I will see you in the next videos.